Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hello, friends, family in Christ. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to Worldview Matters. Got a great guest today, Dr. Duke Pesto. We're going to be talking about DEI. I hope you're familiar with at least those initials. We're going to talk about where it came from, what it means, and kind of expose the scam, so to speak. I want to quote Christopher Rufo to kick off this program about DEI. He says, These programs preach the values of tolerance and inclusion, but in reality serve as vehicles for left-wing racialist ideology and partisan political activism. Um, I read a little bit more about what happened and where this came from, and one of the things that I believe, and I'll ask our expert in a minute to explain this, MFE stands for Merit, Fairness, and Equality, and it seems like DEI just all of a sudden dwarfed that. It's not even, merit is not as important anymore. But I want to bring in our special guest today, Dr. Duke Pesta. He's a college professor and he is the director of Freedom Project Media, Freedom Project Academy, FPEUSA.org. Welcome, Dr. Duke. Good to see you, Dave. Always good to see you. How are you doing today? Yeah, great. Good to have you, especially on this topic, yes, sir. Um, DEI for Dummies, because a lot of people don't know where this came from. Sure. So let's start right there. What is DEI? These words sound so innocent and they sound so good, but yeah. where did this come from and, and how is it being used well, today? DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And wags other than me have pointed out that just if you rearrange the words d-i-e is what you get yeah and it is the death of freedom and liberty it really is uh, you think about the word equity i want to start with there mm -hmm. right so dei of course the first thing i want to say about it it is the enforcement mode of wokeness and critical political correct political correctness in fact critical race theory is the idea that we must hijack all forms of culture particularly education in this country to teach a radical leftist view of race and so the dei is how it's implemented in schools that's the f and major corporations and the american military is doing this now so look if you think about critical race theory that's the theory or the idea uh, uh, that we're bringing back racism to fight racism as <laughs> Uh, Kendi, the, the famous uh, the social activist professor who says, what, what, what does he end his book with? Racism, racism in the past, racism today, and racism forever, basically. That the only way the left will win this battle if uh, they segregate and they, they racially segregate people uh, in the way they say that the West has done in the past. So critical race theory is the idea. And, well, let's go one step back real quick. Sure. There's Marxism, out of which this emanates, right? This is pure. What the Marxists started with class uh, warfare is now racial warfare. So this goes back to Marx. Critical race theory is how it's been taught for the last 30 years or so. And then DEI is the implementation of that, taking over the institutions and then transforming them, like you said, downplaying individuality, merit, uh, uh, achievement, all that stuff goes out the window because that's white supremacy now. Mm. And we replace it with diversity, equity, and inclusion. So to go back a little bit more, um, it, it's, it's been ingrained in the system, meaning uh, the university system, academia, corporations, of course. But people don't realize, I'm just one quick example, the University of Michigan, they began their DEI program in 2016. They will spend $63 million, and the NIH, National Institute of Health, will also chip in another $16 million for the Michigan Program for Advancing Cultural Transformation. That's a lot of words. To expand diversity in hiring. So you said something very interesting. Racism in the past, racism now, racism. People like... Um, Jesse Jackson, and who's the other one? Sharpton. Al, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Sharpton. They've made a living off of this and making – there's got to be a victim. Yeah, and you, you said something that was really important. Um, Michigan, they say, has been doing it since 19, uh, 2016. Well, 
They've been doing it a lot longer than that. Okay. DEI came into play. The way, those those initials came into play about 2015. But they've been doing this for 30, 40 years at the university. It just wasn't called yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you have political correctness, which was about 20 years of that. Then you had um, the idea that you got in the public schools, right? Uh, at, with, with the multiculturalism, oh, okay. right? The yep. idea, and all of that was this. Yeah. Multiculturalism in the 70s and 80s basically argued the same thing, that white culture was wrong, Western culture was evil, but non-Western cultures couldn't be criticized because we don't have the right as white people to criticize the horrible record of Japan or China or Islam. So what we taught kids through Howard Zinn's socialist history is that Western culture is inherently w- wicked. Uh, when you see that same wickedness in, in, in much se- se- more severe aspects outside of the West, well, they get a pass. So our kids grew up believing that America was evil and that we had no right to call out or even recognize the evil of other cultures. That became political correctness. That became DEI in about 2015. And so Michigan's been doing this for a lot longer. And it's very alarming that they're they're tying it like as COVID, right? COVID was a health problem. And so therefore, in the name of health, big government had the right to censor and segregate. Uh, so they're calling now what they believe is racism the same thing. It's mm. a nas- The national health organizations are kicking in money to this so they can tr- control us better. Okay, you mentioned COVID, and I've got to bring this up. And we're, we're jumping around a little bit. By the way, if you just joined us, my guest today is Dr. Duke Pesta. He's the director of Freedom Project Academy. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I've been taking a lot of notes on this and preparing for this uh, show today, and there's so much more to learn about this. Um, and again, I want to go to Chris Rufo, who's done a lot of research on this topic. He's done a lot of good for F- Florida and uh, Governor DeSantis on this issue. The radical left in the U.S. has been using DEI to mask tyranny. They are hiding behind a Trojan horse, and inside are perpetrators of a new religious cult diversity, equity, and inclusion. And he goes back to 2020. You mentioned that. You mentioned COVID. Well, along that time, George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And so the left politicized the death of George Floyd and out the door went law and order. And it seems like when all the protests were going on, they were violent. They were blowing up police cars and um, towns, cities. They were destroying businesses. A lot of minorities lost their businesses. Black people, Hispanic people, um, they were victims in this, but it was for the cause. Yeah, you're exactly right. And the G- George Floyd was a catalyst, right? Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that he's a career criminal. Yep. He was stoned out of his mind. He was dangerously unhealthy. Uh, yeah, you could make the argument, I suppose, that the police overreacted, I guess. Uh, but this was not what it was pertained to. Pertain- this right. was not you know, vicious cops looking for the first black guy they met and and destroying him. This was somebody who was in the wrong place at the wrong time because of his own behavior, his 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 history, his drunk his drug problem, uh, who ended up dying in the custody of the police. Right. So there you go. Having said that, uh, there that was the catalyst, right? That's what allowed uh, this to move forward so quickly because Black Lives Matter was the response to this. But you make a good point. Whether you're talking about DEI or you're talking about COVID, this, the government is figuring out ways that they can override individual liberties and yes. the, the free markets of our country and the, uh, the fact that in America we are equally equal under law. We were never meant to be equal out of outcome. And that's it. This is the socialism, right? DEI and the word equity is your, your, your giveaway. Equity. It's not about equality. And this is, this is the lie of the left. We have equality under the law. It is against the law to discriminate on the basis of race. So the only way you get around that is to emphasize, <clears throat> excuse me, equity over equality. And by definition, equity is outcome-based uh, uh, solutions. The blacks don't, make ha- don't have as much money as whites. Uh, blacks uh, don't have the... Uh, the, black, the educational opportunities, we're told it's not true, that white people do. But because minority groups aren't as wealthy as all the other ones, that's racism, right? So this is, you see what they're doing. They're undermining uh, equality. They're, we have equality under the law. That includes African-Americans. Uh, but the problem is, is that 
that doesn't give the left the socialist leveling off of culture that they want. Do you think we only have two minutes before we have to take a break? Do you think that if American history was taught unedited and in, in including how our you know, Americans dealt with slavery and how Christians fought to abolish slavery in America. Other countries still have slaves. Mm -hmm. And do you think that would have made a difference in, in them not being able to get so much going under the DEI and the systemic racism? Quote, it's quote. not just the teaching of accurate American history that would help. World history. But teaching world history, yeah. because like you pointed out, it's only in the West, really, that slavery has been been formally repudiated, laws against it. The West is the only place where wars were fought to stop it. It was the West who first got rid of it. Yep. And like you pointed out, places all across the world, the, the, the Chinese have... Uh, Oh. One million Uyghur uh, Muslims in prison, concentration camps. You've got Islam taking people, black Africans, out of southern Africa and t carrying them as indentured serv servants back to places like Saudi Arabia. Wait a minute. Don't, th don't their lives matter? Yeah, no, they don't because they're not, because blacks doing black thing, bad things to blacks, Africans doing bad things to Africans, Muslims doing bad. No, no, no. They're not white. They don't operate the same way. We're more worried about what America did 150 years ago than we are what Islam or China is doing today. And that's the great hypocrisy. Yep. It's not called out enough. We've got so much more coming up. We've got to take a really quick break. We're with Dr. Duke Pesta. More on Worldview Matters in a minute. Today's show is brought to you by Harbinger's Daily. World news biblically understood. Stay informed at harbingersdaily.com. All right, guys, Dr. Duke Pest is my guest today, and we're talking about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, one quote from an article, this is a significant cultural and ideological revolution, one that has been accomplished with almost no debate or oper uh, oper uh, operationalization of terminolo terminology. I don't even know how to say that, let alone understand what it means. But Duke, yeah, no debate on this. This has been in the system before we are even aware of this, which you explained it a minute ago, but it's not just education. I just want to point out a couple of things. The corporate um, level here. Practically every Fortune 100 company has adopted diversity, equity, and inclusion programming. And one expert said DEI is the vehicle to move communism into the corporate world. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, communism is the, lace, the latest step. I think it's radical socialism first. But keep in mind, it was Marx himself who said, democracy is the first step to socialism. And socialism, then, is the first step to communism. So Marx understood. Mm. Uh, you mentioned history before the break. If uh, the American people understood we were a constitutional republic, with checks and balances, if they understood why the Electoral College mattered, if they understood why uh, in America we have free markets and opportunity, why we have equality, not equity, that would help immensely. But 99% of my university kids and a, and a large majority of Americans think we're a democracy. And remember what Marx said, democracy is not about protecting the rights of minorities. Ironic, isn't it, that the left turned us into a democracy because it's democracies that do not protect the rights of minorities. They protect the majority. So, mob rule. The mob rule. Yep. And so what is the, the left wants? They want the very opposite of what they claim. They want to do away with the rights of minorities, getting rid of the electoral college, for instance. And what they want is a simple mob because mobs will go down the road that Marx understood this mm -hmm. if you could take a constitutional republic turn it into a democracy it's going to be very easy to move it to a socialist state and you mentioned communism and as Marx pointed out socialism is not the end of anything it is a, it's a step. final step toward communism yep and we're beginning to understand that now I think we're learning it the hard way too by seeing what's happening in our culture um, but let's go back to something that I found to be very interesting. Uh, how did, d does this, Dr. Duke Pesta, does this tie in at all to our history in the 1960s with affirmative action, equal employment legislation, the Equal Pay Act, Civil Rights Af Act of 1964, and then in 1967 we had the Age Discrimination Employment Act. We were just talking about the 2000s and 2015, how it got into the university system, but 
How do, do any of these tie in to well, well, DEI? Segre- the, we should be really praising America for the last 60 years, not condemning it. Yep. Because the civil rights movement put an end to segregation, which was the last holdover of slavery. With the end of segregation, separate but equal, you now have a country that is no longer systemically racist. Uh, you could make an argument that as long as segregation was the law, it was impossible to have equality. Well, that's been gone for 60 years. <laughs> And so rather than see that progress over 60 years, the progressive left comes along, and what do they want? They're bringing back segregation. We now have segregated graduate graduations at colleges, right, where blacks and Hispanics and the LGBTQ get their Native Americans are segregated. We're building campus buildings, Dave, that are dorms where only minorities will live. So civil rights <laughs> going move, backwards. The, yeah, the civil <laughs> rights movement ended segregation. The progressive left, under the, the characterization of DEI, are bringing it back. Go back to what I said, what Abraham X. Kendi said, right? That the only solution in the future is racism. The people who were racist before must pay the price by being treated uh, by the by this new rising class of people. Be, be basically, let's hate white people and and, and in, in, enshrine that in law, right? That to be white is to somehow uh, in, wow. be intrinsically evil. This this is really hard to understand because it seems like they're like I think you said it they're they're discriminating, uh, but it's all under In the, the guise of a- anti discrimination, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Which so, is of course a lie, right? Fighting yeah, fire with yeah. fire burns down everybody's house. It doesn't fix anything. This is uh, uh, this is revenge. This is. Uh, an unjust interpretation of history, taking the yes. freest country in the history of the world yep. and arguing it's the only racist country in the world. So you turn it to a socialist country. And the irony, why are people coming to the, the a huge number of people who are fleeing here and crossing the borders illegally? They're running away from socialist governments. Yeah. And so what is our answer to all of this? Uh, socialism <laughs> discriminates. Uh, let's d- fix the problem by trashing freedom and opportunity and protections under the law and and uh, the protection of minority voices let's get rid of all that to install so- socialism and this is the problem uh many many of the people who are, are marching behind black lives matter and dei programs do not realize what this is because for 50 60 years we've not taught them this yeah. is this could only happen through ignorance and our public schools are propagating for generations now it, cultural and historical ignorance and so you got the under where's it coming from dave hmm. the under 40s the under 30s overwhelmingly support yep. socialist initiatives yeah. because they don't know any better what was the percentage that were supporting bernie sanders when he was running well over 60 percent of was it millennials or just people under 30 yeah, it was i saw a astounding. statistic that said 74 percent of of the college age group between 18 to about 25 almost three out of four of them would immediately transform this country into a socialist state if they could do so no questions asked so isn't it simple to conclude that if they knew the true history of socialism and dictatorships around the world, they would not support it? I explained it to my college kids. I did just last uh, Thursday when I had class last. I said this, look, um, if you actually believe that any organization or country or individual who was not completely, according to our sensibilities, woke they must be canceled. And my kids get it. You know, we got to cancel the flag. We got to cancel the uh, Constitution. The founding fathers have to have their names pulled out. Anybody <laughs> who fought for the Confederacy has to be erased. Okay, fine. I, I say I, I want consistency. If you believe that, then the first thing you have to get rid of is socialism. And we're talking, what, four, 400, 500 million dead in the last 200 years, 150 years? So if, if you're going to play the game, and I tell them this, I don't want to cancel anybody myself. But if you want to cancel so-called racist people from the past and uh, colonialist people and people who've done horrible things, genocides, well, before you touch Western culture, you got to get rid of socialism. And there's, my kids are smart enough to realize they're, they're, the professors are, are canceling groups and the solution that the professors give them is socialism. And there's where I point out the lie. If you got to cancel, you got to cancel everything. And that starts with socialism. But we're forgiving left wing dictators. We're overlooking the horrors and the yeah. genocides of socialism. Mm-hmm. And that shows you and I, my even my kids who are badly undereducated, 
they can see the innate unfairness of this, but I don't know that it's going to do much to change the culture in the long run. Brainwashing is too kind a word, I think, to use what's been happening with public education. And you know that you talk about that all the time. Wasn't it uh, somebody in the Obama administration was praising Cher- Mao? Well, don't wasn't for- that wasn't that yes. just like. 10 years ago yes, or something? Yes, not even. And Obama himself had a uh, life-size, por- life-size portrait of Che Guevara in his Chicago offices. Now, mm. uh, Che was a murderer. Che had a, be- a vendetta against black and gay Cubans. And, and You don't uh, hear that part of the no, story. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, he, he was a murderer. He, he created the killing fields of the Castro brothers. Mm. But because he was a Dr. Che and he was, he was killing in the name— of progressive socialism, and so he's a hero. You you can wear his T-shirts, uh, but look, and no one's going to care. But yeah. try showing up with a a, a picture of uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson on your on your <laughs> your shirt at a typical university. You're going to be called out for it, or Donald Trump. But or we won't Donald we Trump, won't go yeah. there. But yeah, that that makes you make a very good point. I see kids with Che Guevara shirt. They don't even know who, no. who he is and what he stood for. And it, let's get back to the corporate. Um, level here when we talk about DEI, Walmart. I mean, they're not alone, but they're the, they're ones that are going along with this. They are convinced America has a problem with systemic racism. So on Walmart's own website, they have a Center for Racial Equity. It describes quote part of Walmart's larger efforts to address drivers of systemic racism and accelerate change. They yep. work with other nonprofits. Yep. Uh, They have new positions created now, developed. So we know marching orders have been given. Walmart Foundation has committed, Duke, $100 million over five years. And the center has invested $58 million to complement and extend the societal impact of Walmart's business initiatives to advance racial equity. So we're talking about DEI. This is just one example, one major corporation. And here's why they do it. Take Bud Light as another example. That's probably a more famous example. (laughs) Bud Light put this mincing little puppet, (laughs) right, Dylan Mulvaney on the cans. Now, you and I— You're very kind. And everybody knows that— Dylan Mulvaney does not drink Bud Light. In fact, in the commercial they shot with him, he takes a sip and he's he's almost can bear it himself. Anheuser-Busch is not stupid. Neither is Walmart. Yep. They realize that if you don't cater to the radical racists in this country, the, the progressive left, you could be canceled. You could be in trouble. Or they could be sued. Or they could be sued. And they don't fear the right. They don't fear middle America. Uh, they, at, at, with Black Lives Matter and that, that, that global shakedown that that was, and again, what, 70, 80 million of that money is missing, completely abscond- absconded away by the people who ran it? It was a scam. And they have million-dollar homes. Abs, and they have how, fences around their homes, <laughs> the people who started that movement. So my point to you is, is that the, all the big companies have f- figured out that the powers that be are on the side of equity. And so they can't really lose. The one mistake Wal- – see, notice what Mar- Walmart did. They, behind the scenes, this is what they're doing. They're feeding all this money to these yeah. racial segregationists, but – they don't have satanic trans clothing in their schools, in their, in their stores. Target, Target does. does. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is the difference. Walmart's just been smarter about it. The mm. minute it bleeds into your product line, then we Americans have the only option we have, which is to boycott. Mm. And look at the lesson that Anheuser-Busch uh, Do you think they learned, though? I think, well— uh, I think they did. I think if they could do it over, they wouldn't. Because you can do what Mark Walmart does. You hand out millions and millions of dollars to race grifters. They're not asking you for anything else. It's never about the cause. It's about their pockets. Right. The same that you mentioned uh, Sharpton and Jackson from the yeah. 90s. Notice what they did. When you gave them payouts for the Rainbow Coalition, they stopped harassing you. So... Walmart, and many people, I remember, you remember 20 years ago, Walmart was the great enemy. Walmart right. was this conservative Arkansas cunt who was shutting off moms and pops and stuff. Now they're, they're the, one of the golden boys. They're, Interesting. They're one of the globalists, right? Yeah. Uh, and so the difference between Walmart and Target here, same initiatives, same stupid leftism, but Walmart hides it, at least doesn't foreground it, right. and people think they're not Target when they are mm. exactly the same as Target. Yeah. Um, back to the university level real quick. We've just got two or three minutes left here. Um, 
I just want to mention what they did over at Texas A&M. That they were looking into the agenda here, and um, it says starting in the 90s, the university's leadership went all in for these types of programs that would, you know, advance social justice causes. But the latest climate report found that students now feel less comfortable on campus, less at home. And this was at Texas A&M. Efforts to cultivate a more welcoming uh, climate backfired. This is the DEI infusion. And so according to students, well, it seems like they're more restricted. And so they're realizing this has been about imposing leftist ideology. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think what's happened is you hire at, at Michigan, they have over 90 DEI officers, 90. Think about that. You hire all these DEI people and the only way they keep their jobs if they find racism. If there is no, if you've eradicated racism, they have no platform of change. So you hire one of them and one of them becomes three and five and 10 and 100. And so they got to keep finding it. So when you say um, pe kids are re oh, becoming awoke, I don't think so. We're teaching kids, particularly minority kids, that they're always discriminated against. So they're always going to see more of it, yeah. which means you got to hire more of them and spend mm -hmm. another hundred million dollars. They're also creating racism where there is none. You got it. They're looking under rocks, trying to find it, but they're also giving the idea that it's more, it's more prevalent than it even you is. You have to read Shakespeare in your English class, that's white supremacy. You have to prove your, your show your work in math, that's racism. Yeah, they're, they're cre everything is racism now. Um, really quick, I'll end with this quote and get uh, Duke's quick take on this because we're running out of time. Um, Heather McDonald, she's at the College Fix Advisory Board. Um, she spoke to this and she said a university's task is the pursuit of truth. The DEI bureaucracy is founded on a lie, a lie which teaches students to think of themselves as victims, to see racism where none exists. It creates through racial preferences, the very divisions and discomforts that it purports to solve in an endless, vicious cycle. That's kind of what you were describing just a minute ago. Yeah, DEI is the big lie that allows all the small lies, that if you tell a joke, you're a racist, that if you uh, uh, ask uh, somebody of a different race about their haircut, you're racist, that if you actually believe that math is uh, subject objective you're a racist so the big lie as with socialism the big lie of socialism always enables a thousand small lies hmm. wish we had more time there's so much this is it, it's not just a specific thing we're talking about this is a whole movement and agenda and ideology dr duke thank you for coming on worldview matters today friends we uh, i wish we had a lot more time to talk about this but we'll pick this up we'll have duke back another time uh, we want to encourage you to subscribe to our weekly updates, worldviewmatters.tv. Um, share us on social media. Every share matters because we are shadow banned and suppressed and all that, you know, those that don't want to tolerate the truth. But thank you for your support. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter. <laughs>